Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this top down crochet sweater. I think it's perfect for Christmas and it has a fun festive feel with the ruffles. I'll be making this sweater in a size small and the full ribbon pattern from sizes extra small to 3 extra large is free on my blog. The link will be in the description bar. You will need DK weight yarn, a 5mm crochet hook, 4 stitch markers, some scissors and a darning needle. To begin create a slip knot. Insert your crochet hook into the loop. We're making a top down sweater so we want to make sure that the neckline is nice and stretchy. We're going to make a neckline out of foundation double crochets. To begin, chain 2. Yarn over and insert your hook into the first chain. Yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through one. This creates the chain of your stitch. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. This forms your double crochet. To create your next foundation double crochet, Yarn over and insert your crochet hook in between the chain and the stitch. We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through one. You've formed the chain at the bottom of your stitch. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. This forms your double crochet. We're going to repeat these steps until we have 66 foundation double crochets. Once you have 66 stitches, slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. Make sure that your ring of stitches isn't twisted. Don't worry about the gap because we'll sew it together at the end of the pattern. To start round 2, you can chain 3 or do a no turning chain stitch. I find that the no turning chain stitch helps to reduce the seam at the back of the sweater. To do a no turning chain stitch, pull up a loop roughly the height of your double crochet. Hold on to the top of your loop and yarn over. Yarn over your working yarn and pull through. You should have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops. The no turning chain stitch or chain 3 counts as a double crochet. We're now going to front post double crochet around the next stitch. Yarn over and insert your hook around the post of the stitch. You can see that the post is in front of the crochet hook. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. And now we're going to back post double crochet around the next stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook around the post of the stitch from behind. You'll notice that the post is behind the crochet hook. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. Front post double crochet around the next stitch. Alternate between back post double crochet and front post double crochet until the end of the round. Slip stitch into the chain 3 or no turning chain stitch to join. To start round 3, chain 3 or do a no turning chain stitch. Double crochet into the next 10 stitches.
Place three double crochets into the next stitch. Place a stitch marker on top of the second double crochet of the group. Double crochet into the next 10 stitches. Place three double crochets into the next stitch. Place a stitch marker on top of the second double crochet. Double crochet into the next 21 stitches. Place three double crochets into the next stitch. Place a stitch marker on top of the second double crochet. Double crochet into the next 10 stitches. Place three double crochets into the next stitch. Place your stitch marker on top of the second double crochet. Double crochet into each stitch until the end of the round. Slip stitch to join and turn. In total you should have 74 stitches. To start round four, chain three or do a no turning chain stitch. Double crochet in each stitch until you reach the stitch marker. Remove the stitch marker and place three double crochets into the stitch with the stitch marker. Place the stitch marker on top of the second double crochet of the group. Repeat this pattern three more times. So double crochet in each stitch until you reach the stitch with the stitch marker. Place three double crochets into the stitch with the stitch marker. Once you've placed three double crochets into the last stitch marker, double crochet in each stitch until the end of the round. Slip stitch to join. You should have 82 stitches. We're going to repeat round four until the end of round 21. At the end of round 21, you should have 218 stitches. We're at the end of round 21 and I folded the yoke in half just to make the sweater a bit more manageable. We're now going to join the body together and leave space to crochet the sleeves onto the armholes. To start body round 1, chain 3 or do a no turning chain stitch. Double crochet in each stitch until the first stitch marker. Once you've reached the first stitch marker, double crochet into the stitch with the stitch marker. Turn your work and double crochet into the next stitch with the stitch marker. The skip stitches form your first armhole. Double crochet in each stitch until the next stitch marker.
Double crochet into the stitch with the stitch marker. Turn your work and double crochet into the next stitch with the stitch marker. You have created your second armhole. Double crochet in each of the remaining stitches. At the end of the round, slip stitch to join and turn. You should have 122 stitches in total. To start body round 2, chain 3 or do a no turning chain stitch. Double crochet in each stitch along the round. At the end of the round, slip stitch to join and turn. For round 3, repeat round 2. So chain 3 or do a no turning chain stitch. Double crochet in each stitch in the rounds. At the end of the round, slip stitch to join and turn. For round 4, we're going to increase the sweater from the sides. To begin, chain 3 or do a no turning chain stitch. Double crochet in each stitch until you reach the first armhole. Once you're directly underneath the armhole, place two double crochets into the same stitch. Double crochet along until you're underneath the second armhole. Underneath the second armhole, place two double crochets into the same stitch. Double crochet in each stitch until the end of the round. Slip stitch to join and turn. You should have 124 stitches. Going to repeat rounds 2 to 4 until the end of round 28. I recommend trying on your sweater to see if the length suits you. You can easily add or remove rounds as you wish. So for the first two rounds, you'll double crochet in each stitch with no increase. For the third round, you'll increase by placing two double crochets in the same stitch underneath each armhole. You should have 140 stitches. At the end of round 28, we're going to repeat rounds 2 and 3 until the end of round 30. But at the end of round 30, don't turn your work. Now we'll crochet the body ribbing. Chain 7. Single crochet into the second chain from the hook. To single crochet, insert your hook into the chain. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. Single crochet in each chain. In total you should have seven single crochets. We now need to attach the single crochets to the body of the sweater. Slip stitch into the next two stitches along the edge of the sweater. Turn your work. 
We're now going to work into the back loops of the single crochets. So skip the first two slip stitches. The loop further away from you is the back loop. Back loop single crochet in each stitch until the last stitch. Single crochet into the last stitch. Turn your work. To start row 3, chain 1. Chain 1 does not count as a stitch. Back loop single crochet into the next 6 stitches. Slip stitch into the next two stitches along the edge of the sweater. Turn your work. Alternate between rows 2 and 3 until you've worked your way around the edge of the sweater. You should have as many rows as stitches in your final round. So altogether you should have 140 rows of single crochets. Once you have 140 rows fast enough, Cut your yarn and thread your tail with the darning needle. So the edges of your ribbing together using a mattress stitch. Weave in your end. We're now going to crochet the sleeves to the body. Make sure that the seam is facing you. Insert your crochet hook along the edge of the armhole. Look at the stitches along the edge of the armhole and make sure the wrong side is facing you. Secure your yarn and pull up a loop. Chain 3 or do a no turning chain stitch. Double crochet in each stitch along the edge of the armhole. Double crochet into the stitch with the stitch marker. In between the two stitch markers, space out two double crochets two together. To double crochet two together, yarn over. Insert your hook into the stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have four loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Repeat this for the second double crochet two together. You should have 52 stitches in total. At the end of the round, slip stitch to join and turn. To begin round two of the sleeves, Chain 3 or do a no turning chain stitch. We're going to double crochet into the front loops of the stitch. So the front loop is the loop closest towards you. Front loop double crochet in each stitch in the round. When you turn your work over, you can see that the back loops leave a ridge on the front of the sleeve. Later we'll crochet into these loops to create the ruffles. At the end of the round, slip stitch to join and turn. 
To start round three, chain three or do a no turning chain stitch. Double crochet in each stitch along the round. Slip stitch to join and turn. For round four, repeat round three. So chain three, double crochet in each stitch along the round. Slip stitch to join and turn. And now in round five, we're going to start to decrease the sleeves. Chain three or do a no turning chain stitch. Double crochet two together. Double crochet in each remaining stitch along the round. At the end of the round, you should have 51 stitches. Slip stitch to join and turn your work. Repeat rounds 3 to 5 until the end of round 32. At the end of round 32, you should have 42 stitches in total. To begin the final round of your sleeves, chain 3 or do a no turning chain stitch. Double crochet two together. Double crochet in the next stitch. And then double crochet two together. Alternate between a double crochet and then a double crochet two together until the end of the round. At the end of the round, you should have 28 stitches. Slip stitch to join. We're now going to use the same method we used for the body ribbing on the sleeves. To begin, chain 9, single crochet in the second chain from the hook, single crochet in each remaining chain. You should have 8 stitches in total. Slip stitch in the next 2 stitches along the edge of the sleeve. Turn your work. Skip the 2 slip stitches and then back loop single crochet into the next 7 stitches. Single crochet into the last stitch of the row. Turn your work. To start row 3, chain 1, back loop single crochet into the next 8 stitches. Slip stitch along the next 2 stitches on the edge of the sleeve. Turn your work. Alternate between rows 2 and 3 until you work your way around the edge of the sleeve. You should have 28 rows in total. At the end of your final row, fasten off. Cut your yarn and thread the tail with a darning needle. Sew the ends of your ribbing together. We're now going to crochet the ruffle directly onto the sleeve. Insert your crochet hook into the turning chain of round 2 on the sleeve. Make sure that the row of front loops are facing you. Secure your yarn and pull up a loop. Chain 3 or do a no turning chain stitch. Place two double crochets in each front loop until you reach the end of the round.
At the end of the round, slip stitch to join. Make sure you don't turn your work. To start round two, chain three or do a no turning chain stitch. Place one double crochet in each stitch along the round. At the end of the round, slip stitch to join. Repeat round two until the end of round four. You can add or remove rounds to make your ruffles longer or shorter. Once you've reached your desired length, slip stitch your join and fasten up. Repeat the sleeve and ruffle steps for the second sleeve. Weave in all of your ends. At the top of your sweater, make sure to sew together the edges of the neckline ribbing. Steam and block your sweater. You've finished your Hollyberry sweater.